Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 of the Diversity of Life series with me, Massey. For this video, I am going to go into the second half of me, which is the ring-tailed mongoose, or Galadea elegans. And no, I'm not a red panda. The species is from the family Euplaridae, and its best known relative is the meerkat. You've probably seen them in a lot of media such as The Lion King, where Timon is a meerkat. This family is made up of mostly predators. Predators feed on mostly small mammals, other insects, and other animals that they can feed on. The entire family of hepatids is endemic to the southern area of Africa. In particular, there's quite a few species from Madagascar. They are placed in the same general order as cats, hyenas, and cervids. The entire family of organisms is actually banned in the United States. This is because that there was an import of this species in the West Andes in the early 90s to kill off vermin. Unfortunately, this kind of backfired as most introduced species do. They ended up going after most of the local ground fauna and it actually decimated the local species. But shh, I still gotta cross the border to get into Anthrocon. The ring-tailed mongoose is actually native to Madagascar and it's only native to the small eastern coast along the tropical rainforests. So like most members of its family, it is a carnivore. So it'll feed on anything from mice to frogs to insects and will even feed on other species within the same family of organisms. So other mongoose species. The species is very agile so it'll climb, swim, and run as fast as it can for its prey. The species is also diurnal which means that it is active during the day. Generally, this species has a generation time of about seven years, so it takes seven years from the young to become able to have children of their own. Unlike the meerkat, this species is actually fairly solitary, so it's either found alone or with one other member of its family. And unlike most species of this size, they actually only have one offspring. There are some hypotheses about how these species care for their young. One idea is that they're like most carnivores where the young are attritional, or they only open their eyes after a few weeks old. This means that the mother would have to care for their young in, the, in a burrow, similar to what a meerkat has, but only with the one young inside. The ring-tailed mongoose marks the territory via a scent gland on the base of their tail, and so this warns out other individuals of its species or other organisms that this is its territory. One interesting thing is, like most Madagascar inhabitants, its place on the greater phylogeny of life, or its relatedness to its common ancestor, is actually pretty largely unknown, because this island was separated from the major body of Africa about 160 million years ago, and there isn't a great fossil record from this area, so we don't know exactly how these species species are related to one another and from the species on the main island. This means how we interpret how the species on this island are related is constantly evolving and changing. Because of their playful and agile nature, similar to otters, they're a favorite in local zoos, and so you can often find these species within the local African zoos. Similar to the marvelous spatula tail hummingbird, this species is actually listed on the IUCN red list of endangered species. The good news is, is it's high up on the level, so it's only on the level 8 out of the 9 ranks. The reason for this placement is because in the past 10 years, there's been a 20% population drop. This is often due to habitat loss. So due to local deforestation and urbanization, these species are getting pushed out of their native range. Also, the species, because it's a predator, often feeds on the local livestock and small birds, such as chickens. This means that they are hunted and often killed by the dogs that are there to protect the crop species. There are currently restoration efforts in play, and so a lot of the native range within Madagascar of this species in the rainforest is being protected. If you liked what you heard here and want to learn more about the ring-tailed mongoose, you can check the links below. I have a link to the IUCN red list listing for this species, and you can learn more about their native range and what kind of research is going on with this species right now. I hope you guys have enjoyed the first couple episodes and learning about what makes up my persona. There are a couple really cool species and of concern due to their listing on the IUCN red list. And I want to hear from you guys. So did you enjoy hearing about my persona? Did you guys want to hear about your persona or some of the major species that make up the furry community? Leave a comment below and let me know because I'd love to hear from you guys. For the next video, I'm kind of going to veer off the species for a little bit and talk about some broader concepts in biology. And for those that are insect enthusiasts, I think you'll like what's to come. Again, thanks so much for watching. And if you liked what you saw, be sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and follow me on Twitter if you want to see more of my furry antics and regular updates. Hope to see you guys next time. See ya!